Hi everyone, I'm Ken Ham, CEO of Answers and Genesis Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. We have a very special time for you here in Legacy Hall at the Creation Museum. We're going to get to know the Wild Brothers. These are the well, it's not all the Wild Brothers. It's These more. are three of the four of the Wild Brothers. That's right. And some of you have probably followed them on Answers TV. They have a series out. Uh, that's called Adventures in Creation, and we have the DVDs that many people have obtained through Answers in Genesis. But uh, first of all, I'd like them to introduce themselves to you. You can uh, give your name and your age. You never know who's sitting in the audience. So. <laughs> all right, so I'm Kian. I'm the third old, uh, youngest wild brother, and I'm 19. Yeah, I'm Asher. I'm 17. I'm the youngest. I'm Hudson, and I'm 21, the second oldest wild brother. So, okay, there must be another brother. There were four of you in the videos. Yes. Yeah. Our fourth, or the oldest brother, Morgan, he's not here with us. He, he just got back on his honeymoon the day before we were coming up, so he couldn't make it. No, excuses, well, excuses, excuses. <laughs> okay, so you're called the Wild Brothers, and my understanding is that you grew up in Papua, Indonesia, mm -hmm. in remote jungles with missionary parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that why you're called wild? Did they sort of find you in the jungle and sort of, you know, train you be, to be civilized or something? Is, <laughs> no, most not people quite. think so. But. Actually, your last name is Wild. But oh, you did have a wild upbringing, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So your last name is Wild. You had a wild upbringing. Correct. Yeah, over there. And, and so does this mean, were you, were you born in the jungle, like under a tree or something? This guy almost was. Yeah. I was born in Indonesia, but it wasn't, it wasn't under a tree. It was in a hospital, thankfully. So. Oh, but it could have been under a tree? It could have been. Mom's uh, pretty tough. She could actually, have you know, yeah. I have a funny story about each of our kids, the way they were born. There's something funny about each one of them. But uh, one of them was actually born under a tree. Really? Um, wow. Well, yeah, because, um, I don't know, my wife had these quick labors. Mm -hmm. uh, our second child, she actually was born before the ambulance arrived. I didn't even know what to do. I mean, I was a teacher and suddenly there's a baby and it's not supposed to be there uh, because oh, it's supposed yeah. to happen in a hospital. And wow. I thought, what on earth do I do? The ambulance is not e even here. And I thought, okay, I remember seeing a movie and I remember what they did in the movie. So I hung her up by the feet, slapped her on the bottom and she cried and I said, oh, that works. Uh, so anyway, there you go. but uh, our son, Jeremy, actually, when we knew he was sort of on the way, quickly called the ambulance and said, now you've missed it before, don't do it this time. So they turned up like within three seconds and nice. we're on our way and the ambulance driver said, we've got to stop, come around the back and help me. And we're under a tree and Jeremy was born. And I told my wife that, uh, you know, I said, you had a nice view of the city, you must admit, you know, you can see <laughs> the moon. And anyway, so, wow. so you weren't born under a tree. No. So you yeah. were born in a hospital too. Yeah. Here in the States, actually, oh, here in all the my States. parents were in training. So, yeah. so because you were born outside of America, do you have a different citizenship or something? I don't. Actually, Indonesia doesn't allow dual citizenship, so technically I feel like I'm part Indonesian, but so you decided, on the record, I'm Was not. that reluctant on your part to be American or anything? Uh, well, I wasn't really able you didn't to make have a choice. at the time. Your parents so decided I was for mom you? mom and dad and their yeah. wisdom. But, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So um, we're going to get to know you a little bit here. Now, you actually are at the Creation Museum right now, and you've been through the Ark Encounter. Yeah. Uh, so what are your first impressions? I mean, I think you've been here before, haven't you? Yeah, last time we were here was about five years ago. So a lot has changed. It's been amazing to just walk back through it. It's so encouraging, super awesome. One of the best parts was driving up in the bus, and then you walk through that rainbow, and there's the Ark. It was it, beautiful. It's an amazing sight, it is. It? It's my favorite Breathtaking. Time. Yeah. Well, we want to find out a bit about you. Now, you just produced your own adventure documentary, it's like That's a right. movie, That's but right. we're going to wait to tell people about that. Okay. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what it's like, well, to be born uh, with missionary parents in a remote part of the world. Tell us, tell us what you did there in Papua Indonesia. Yeah, so um, we basically grew up over in the jungle. So we lived about 18 years over in Indonesia, uh, working with this small tribal group out in the middle of the jungle. So think no roads, no hospital, no internet, just this little tribal group out in the middle of the jungle, miles and miles of jungle. And so because they were cut off from all the civilization, they were also cut off from the gospel. 
They didn't have any chance to hear about Jesus. They didn't have one scrap of scripture in their own language. So they had no chance to hear about the gospel. So um, our family um, went in there. We had to learn the language and the culture. They actually, they were an oral culture, so they didn't even have their language written down. So uh, my parents and our coworkers actually created an alphabet for them to translate the Bible into their language so that we could teach them chronologically through the Bible and present to them the gospel. So um, that's kind of what we did um, with the people there. Now, now, wait a minute. You mean you had no television? No. No. No smartphones? No, no smartphones. not until we were no, no, years old. No internet? We did oh. have pretty much a limitless backyard, though. The jungle was our backyard, so that's where we spent most of our free time. Wow, oh, this must have really affected you guys. I mean, not having TV. <laughs> that's right. No, we're messed I, up. I, I, I got a feeling it affected you for the better. Would that be right? Hopefully, that's what we're we a little like. behind on some things, but yeah, hopefully for the better. Hopefully for the better. So, um, grew up in the in the jungle over there, and so you learned the language. We did. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Growing up is pretty easy. Spending all of our days with our tribal buddies. When you're so young, you just kind of hear and speak, and you're not embarrassed to make mistakes. So it was pretty easy learning the tribal language. So let me ask you a question. So you didn't have TV to distract you? No. Nope. Or internet to distract you? That means you actually got educated. We did. Mom is an excellent teacher. So we grew up being homeschooled ever since kindergarten all the way up through high school. Yeah. And, no, just, just getting to know you guys, I got a feeling you probably were also impacted by Answers in Genesis material. Is that correct? That's Absolutely. right. We used ABC on the curriculum you guys developed. And we also have seen a lot of your seminars and teaching programs. So. Yes, that is your big buddies. influence in our lives, for sure. And you know, you were with uh, New Tribes of Mission, mm -hmm. right. uh, which has changed its name now to Ethnos 360. That's correct. right. Because I know over time, words become politically incorrect. Is that right? They do. Mm -hmm. In fact, so many words are now politically incorrect. The latest I hear in America, they want to ban language altogether. It's about the only way we're going to be, surprised. Gonna be able to deal with this, yeah. you know. Um, but. You grew up with a mission organization that actually in many ways had a similar approach to Answers in Genesis. Because one of the burdens I've always had is that, hey, we have generations who don't understand the foundations of the gospel message because they don't understand the account in Genesis, which is the foundation for all doctrine, for whole worldview, for everything, actually. And a lot of churches today don't even teach Genesis 1 to 11. It's a foundation for marriage, for gender, for everything, actually. And New Tribe's mission also had this chronological approach. It's a really radical approach, isn't it? You start at the beginning. Isn't that radical? <laughs> Very. Yeah. Was that important in talking to these people in the remote jungles? Absolutely. Because we even observed other missionaries from different organizations. They would approach a tribal group, a people group that had never been exposed to the gospel, and they'd try to start by teaching right in the middle of the New Testament, starting with the life of Christ. And for people that have never even understood who God is or who his son is, they really can't fully grasp the gospel. So we, started, uh, we saw the importance of starting with this animistic people, as people that had never heard the gospel before, starting in Genesis and laying a foundation for who God was, how sin entered the world, their relationship with God, and like you said, just building on the firm foundation of God's word up to a point where they could reach an understanding of the gospel. Well, I can see how not having TV and internet really negatively affected you. Yeah, um, I'm sure. You know, uh, so I, you use the term people group. You must have studied answers in Genesis material, right? Absolutely. So we don't call them races because mm -hmm. we're all one biological race. We'll go back to Adam and Eve. And so there's uh, one people group. So d did you see any success in presenting the gospel that way to these people? I mean, did any of them actually respond? For sure. Yeah, the people group we worked with were an animistic people group which means that they relied on evil spirits to control everything for them. They lived in constant fear. Uh, their whole lives, every bird that flew by, even rainbows that they saw were all signs, evil signs from evil spirits. And so they lived in constant fear, always trying to appease the evil spirits so life would go well for them. So when they heard the truth of God's word, that there was a creator God who actually was maker of heaven and earth, he was even over the demons and evil spirits that they feared so much, they, had, they found great hope in the message of salvation and um, really clung to it with joy. Yeah, and not only that, because we saw just amazing results right off the bat when they heard the gospel, tons of people accepted it. But we also saw like long-term growth and how these um, New Time believers became really strong in their faith and then went on to be missionaries to their own people group. And they're just some really solid guys out there in that little tribe now who are just super strong doctrine, all sorts of awesome stuff. 
So having that whole foundational um, biblical worldview really allowed them to grow in their faith and become really strong believers. Well, I can see that not having TV and the internet really impacted you guys. Uh, I can see that. Impacted them for the better, (laughs) actually. Uh, So, okay, so you're out there in the jungles and you decided for fun, let's just produce our own video program. Well, not quite. It was actually our home church who uh, had a lot of questions for us. What was it like growing up on the mission field as little kids? Um, What were the fun things that we did for activities? And so we thought, what better way to share really with our home church than to make a video series? And that just slowly progressed and we thought bigger, well, let's make a video series for everyone to um, have have availability to. So we created a series to kind of expose kids to what modern day missions looks like. Because being homeschooled, we read a lot of the classic missionary stories, but really realized there wasn't anything modern about missionaries. Like, what do missionaries today do? And so we created this uh, cool video series to kind of expose kids to the fun aspects of living interior in the jungles. And um, yeah, really with a theme of um, serving Christ, living for Christ is the ultimate adventure. So let's just show a a trailer that sort of gives you a little feel for this particular series. Yeah, let's do it. That's totally different to TV because it, you did something real out there, mm-hmm. right? Who'd be prepared to give their TV to go do stuff like that? Yeah, look That's at that. Right. See, lots of hands all over the room. Maybe you'll inspire some young people here to be missionaries <laughs> in one of those uh, uh, places there. And by the way, your DVDs are available here at Answers in Genesis. In fact, you can get the whole set. Not only that, and we'll come back to this, but... We have a streaming platform called Answers.tv, and all your programs are available on there. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to subscribe. I won't ask the people here who subscribe to Netflix and who subscribe to Disney Plus, uh, because then I'd have to tell them to repent of their sin and get (laughs) Answers.tv, right? And by the way, those streaming platforms increasingly are imposing LGBT worldview and sexual Mm -hmm. perversion on generations. We really need God-honoring, family-friendly programming for our families. And uh, see, you know what that means? Everybody's going to subscribe to Answers TV after this. And it's just over $3 US a month, by the way, for a 12-month subscription. And you can get a seven-day free trial. We've got thousands of programs, including the Wild Brothers. And so you can go there and see the Wild Brothers. Now you want to go home and watch them, don't you? I tell you, you'll fall in love with them. You really will. It's absolutely uh, phenomenal. We also have creationist nature programs, family programs, children's programs, science experiments, uh, animal encounters, because we have many different animals at our zoos, at the Ark and the Creation Museum, children's programs, Bible lessons, animated books. We have movies and documentaries from other Christian organizations like uh, Billy Graham, Mm. uh, Ray Comfort, and the Wild Brothers, and also... We have Spanish programs and Arabic programs and so on. Uh, so it is absolutely uh, phenomenal. So, okay, um, we, before we go on here, now you made, you made this, this adventure documentary. We're going to get to that in a moment. It's quite exciting. But before we get to that, um, you're now here in America and uh, you're going to stay here in America. You're going back to the mission field. What's going to happen there? Yeah, so um, us boys have gotten older, and actually half the family is transitioning back to the States to do college. So Hudson, my oldest brother Morgan, and myself are going to be staying here. Um, we're doing college right now with Boyce College um, here in Kentucky, actually, at Southern Seminary's undergraduate college. And then our youngest brother, Asher, and my parents are going to be heading back overseas um, pretty soon here to continue on the ministry. So you and your parents, and they're actually in the audience here, Mike and Libby. Mike and Libby, give a wave here so we can see you. Uh, You're going to go back to the same people group, different people group? Yeah, so we've actually transitioned from the jungle where we grew up to um, an islands region off on the coast. So instead of living up in the mountains, we're going to be living on the coast, actually on a boat. Uh, I'll be first mate, dad's captain, and uh, we're going to be serving the Lord in that region. So a little different from the jungle, but it's then a whole lot of You're going to leave on a boat? Yep. 
you know, just, just saying that gives me nightmares. Um, because I know the Lord didn't give me the ability to live on a boat. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher, but I've got to be on the land. Uh, because if I, I, if I even look at the ocean and see a boat moving, I get seasick. Oh, man. In fact, when, I, when I'm in a car, I really have to drive. If I don't drive, I get car sick. Mm. And uh, so I don't know how you could live on a boat like that. You know, a number of years ago, actually, some people talked me into making a decision that I regret and will regret for the rest of my life, probably. Uh, and that is that they wanted me to go on a cruise and do a teaching cruise. And we had all these hundreds of people that signed up and went on this cruise to Alaska, and they told me, this is a big ship, it's just, I mean, mm. you know, you That's don't even true. feel the ocean. Well, anyway, when I was to get up and give my first talk, and I got up on stage, and the whole ship was turning 360 degrees, <laughs> um, which is what it seemed to me, and I said one word, and I had to run. Oh, oh no. no. And I got out of there, and... Um, yeah, well, I won't tell you what happened. I don't want to give you the graphic details. You can imagine that. And then they said, you're going to have to take those, those drugs, not drugs, you know what I mean, like medicine, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, that the doctor prescribed. And so I took the maximum of, because I was terrible sick. And mm. Apparently, they tell me I gave the rest of my talks. I don't well remember done. any of it. I have no idea sure what I said. Right. I don't know whether I was for evolution, against evolution. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't remember. Oh, I'm sure it's uh, good. So I could never be on a... And what are you going to do? Just fish all day? And uh, No, I'll be doing my senior year of high school, um, be part of Mom Dad's ministry over there. Um, and also, we do a lot of video blogging here in the States, monthly videos. So the boys will be doing that here in the States, and then I'll be filming as well over there, and we'll kind of tag team back and forth. So I'll be full-time videoing and um, doing high school. Okay, so, okay, let me ask you a question. So when the four of you were living in the jungle there, one of you obviously did the videoing and while the others were, you know, having fun adventures and doing all sorts of things. If you're on your own, uh, I mean, do you operate a drone? I do. I'm actually oh, a drone pilot for all of our filming. So. Really? So you'll be able to get a drone out there, sit it there, there go, in the air, myself. looking at you and then act. <laughs> Either that or lots so what of you're selfie gonna do? shots. Lots of selfies yeah. or that, yeah. So I'm do you sure have your own website? We do, yeah. Wildbrothersproductions.com. Wild, Wildbrothersproductions.com. Wildbrothersproductions.com. And you do a, a video blog, which is called a mm -hmm. vlog. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So really is that like learning a foreign language and you came back to, uh, you know, oh, out of the jungle? Yeah, there's some new terms we had to figure out. Yeah. Lots of Generation Z lingo that we had to learn. Yeah. So still a little bit rusty, but we're working on it. It's coming slowly. Yeah, so our vlog is called like the Wild Way. So basically kind of documents how we grew up in kind of two different cultures. We grew up over in Indonesia, but now we're in the States, and so... Um, the vlog shows how we're not totally Indonesian, we're not totally American, we're somewhere in between, and that's kind of the wild way. So yeah, it kind of shows how that plays the out here in the States. wild way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we transitioned from the highlands of the jungles, highlands of Papua, to this beautiful island region, um, we were out there and we had a little bit of extra time and we thought, wouldn't it be fun to make some short little videos? Not so much like our Adventures in Creation series, that's like a full series, but short little videos between 8 and 12 minutes and um, include our biblical worldview along with really fun adventure because we saw entertainment as such a big part of our American culture. We wanted to use entertainment as like a medium um, for really sharing our, our biblical worldview, um, family philosophy. And uh, so we started a vlog, a video blog out in this island region. But then returning to the States, we transitioned from our old blog, Highlands to Islands, to the Wild Way. As so it's been going for about three years now, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's been fun. You know, I was just thinking, when you, we'll tell them about your movie. We, you, you did a movie, right? Well, it's an, an adventure documentary. Adventure documentary. Mm -hmm. Well, it's absolutely incredible. Well, anyway, we're going to get to that. Okay, that's coming up. And they can see that on Answers TV. It's actually because it's a brand new adventure documentary and it took uh, quite a bit to produce that. It's actually in the buy rent section mm -hmm. on Answers TV. Yep. All the other programs are included with Answers TV, but sure. this one's in the buy rent section. We'll come back to, back to that in a moment. So here you are in the jungles there and you know, Asia Pacific or the region, that, that region, Papua mm -hmm. Indonesia, you come back to America, was a culture shock? A little bit, yeah. yeah a little bit, so. Did um, you notice how Christian it is? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Except definitely quite, quite a surprise. So um, we have lived over in Indonesia for about, like I said, 18 years, but every three or four years, we would come back to the States for about eight months to just reconnect with family, um, our family and our home church, our supporting churches. So it wasn't um, brand new. We are kind of used to the States. But yeah, every time it's always culture shock. It's just like, you know, two totally different worlds. And so, um, yeah, coming back, 
there's a lot, as we're getting older, kind of understanding all the sin issues that we see in our culture today, it's um, very sobering. But yeah, I mean, people are the same no matter, no matter where you live. Over in Indonesia, we saw the same thing. It's like, you know, our human nature is just sinful. We're all descendants of Adam, so because of that, we're all um, sinful by nature. And so yeah, over here in the States, there's different kinds of sins and at different um, magnitudes, but the solution is still the same. It's the same as it was in the Wano tribe where we lived. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the only way that we're going to see any change because, um, yeah, people are just sinful. And the only way to be able to change that is to have a totally new heart, which is only um, possible through Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, our culture is kind of going downhill. And the, probably the main reason is that is because um, the church has not been standing on these foundational truths as much as it should. It's kind of like a room. You know, if you take the light of our, out of a room, it's immediately going to get dark. That's just, it's obvious. And so we as Christians are like the light of the world. And so if we start reducing, obviously darkness is going to start expanding. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, it's our jobs as Christians to be that light in our culture. And it's that, if that, as that light grows brighter, we're going to see um, these issues in our culture starting to decrease because it'll, it'll expel them. Which is one of the main reasons why we love Answers in Genesis. I was Genesis. about to say that, yeah. It's a breath of fresh air coming up to AIG for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like an oasis. And you know, yes. really, what you saw there in, in the remote jungles and the people who needed that approach starting at the beginning mm-hmm. to lay the foundation so they would understand the gospel, yeah, exactly. that's what we need today in our mm-hmm. culture. And that's why at Answers in Genesis, like the Creation Museum, we walk you through from Genesis to Revelation, mm-hmm. the seven seas of history, and sadly, many of our churches aren't teaching the foundation at the beginning, and we're going out telling people, oh, trust in Jesus. There's generations have no idea who Jesus is. They don't understand what sin is. We've got to start at the very mm-hmm. beginning. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. you're going to, so you're going to basically seminary. Uh, yep, and I was just Harvard. thinking, how old are you now? 19. 19. With what you said before, uh, what you said was more profound than what Unfortunately, a lot of pastors can say, you should just ch- start a church now in this, oh, this, wow. this area. I, I, but it, it's sad that uh, the majority of our Christian leaders, now there are churches and pastors that stand on God's word, probably some in this audience here as we do, um, but the majority do not. And just to see young people like yourselves understanding how important it is to stand and who understand God's word and the gospel, I mean, what a, what a witness that is to even others here and how important it is uh, to raise up young men uh, like this, and I can see that not having TV and the internet really did impact you, actually. Uh, so, okay, let's move on here. You produced uh, a, a documentary. It's an adventure documentary, and it's called Islands of the Four Kings. So before we see a trailer of this, uh, tell us just a little bit, give us a little yeah. bit of what it's all about. Yeah, so like I said, we transitioned from the jungle down to this island regions, and uh, as we were living there, we were starting to uncover some evidence that led us to that there's an ancient people group that once inhabited these islands, and now nobody knows about them. And so that kind of uh, led us on this search to find the truth about these people. And so we um, went out searching for a number of days on these remote islands, and we uncovered some really interesting facts and artifacts, like uh, ancient cliff drawings, um, burial sites, and even a really interesting archaeological discovery by the end of it. And on our search for kind of uh, the truth of this people group, we contrast that with the truth of scripture and our biblical worldview. And um, it also is interesting because it kind of gives us a glimpse into um, the spiritual darkness and the worldview of that area and the people that live there. So This island region is, was so remote. There really wasn't a lot of people living out there. So as we were, my brothers and I, as we were um, living out there and exploring, we started finding, yeah, like Asher said, these little clues that there was once an ancient people these um, undocumented cliff art and um, caves full of bones. People left their, their bones and material possessions in there, some dating hundreds, even thousands of years old. And so we wanted to find out more about this people group. Who was this ancient people group? And so that kind of started, um, well, really was the purpose behind the video. We go on this epic exploration to find out who these people were. And like Asher mentioned, on this search for who the people were, we find, um, we also search for really truth and bring our biblical perspective to bear. So you three and your brother, mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. elder brother, but you never studied archaeology. And no, so you're, no. you're not known to be famous <laughs> archaeologists. No. And yet you discovered an un, the evidence of an unknown people group. We did, mm-hmm. yeah, just due to the remoteness of the area. And you were able to actually discover some artifacts. And yeah. mm-hmm. Now, without giving well, away what, what you find yeah, in the movie, did, it, so. did you come to some interesting conclusions? Yeah, we sure did. We yeah. did. Really? We, we were actually really artifacts. surprised. So. I, I tell you what, without even watching the movie, I would guess that you found out that 
the people who lived there were probably your relatives. They yeah, were. When you go off. back to Noah, back to Adam. <laughs> Eventually, yep. if you take Eventually, it back all yeah. the way. Isn't that right? Correct. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So let's uh, look at a trailer for your adventure documentary. All right, let's do it. The islands of the four kings hold secrets of a culture lost, of a people long forgotten. But remnants of their past have survived, clues to their identity. We found one of them. We're going remote to find more. You know, they used the caves. So you have to go to places where you have caves. This cave is kind of like a, a cave of evil spirits. Well, that's comforting. I think it's going to go up there. Let's just say, we weren't disappointed. For all we know, this could be an ancient language. We have no idea. Wow, the greatest place I've ever been to. There's bats that are swarming all around us. We're just so thankful that the Lord allowed us to be a part of this adventure. Wow, who wants to watch that adventure documentary? Yeah. Well, you can do that by purchasing the DVD right here from Answers in Genesis today and taken home with you, or had you subscribed to Answers TV, you That's would right. already know about it. <laughs> and they can watch it on Answers TV. Now, I, I found out that you guys also have a, is it a music CD? That's right, our That's oldest true. brother Morgan, he loves music, and so he does the guitar and he also does stuff on the computer, and so yeah, he has his own his own CD of music. And he produced the music talented. for our series. So. Oh, he produced the music for your series. Yeah. For the Adventures in Creation series. So you did everything for that series. You did the filming, the production of it, the script writing, you do your own script writing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But we needed AIG to help launch it, so that's why we came to you guys oh, to okay. help us so, out. <laughs> that, I know, I remember you being here and talking about the series, and it was a great opportunity for us to uh, be involved in launching that series. And I know families just love that series. Uh, so now your your parents um, are trying to become famous like you, is what I understand. Uh, is, is that correct? Yeah, they just came with a new um, Bible devotional for families, and so we are really excited about this because um, it basically it does chronological lessons from Genesis all the way through um, the Bible, actually. And so it's kind of modeled off the same way that we taught um, the tribal people in Wano Land. And so starting at the very beginning, talking about what the Bible is, who is God, his character, and going into the first couple chapters of Genesis of how um, the world is created and setting down these um, foundational teachings, all the way through the Old Testament, through um, like Abraham and the, those fathers, and then um, up through Israel and to the life of Christ. And so by the time you finish with the series, you just have an excellent understanding of the, like, the whole Bible and how it all fits together. Mm. And then my mom did a whole bunch of them. Um, they're called core questions. And so they're questions, kind of like catechism questions, where it um, helps kids just kind of understand key doctrines as they go along. And so, yeah, we're really excited about it because it's how we grew up, it's how we taught the Wano people, and it works. And so we're really excited to see that um, being printed. So you could use these at home as a family devotion, daily family devotion. That's right. Yep. And yep. there's 40 per book, mm -hmm. and it's published by a very famous organization, Answers in right. Genesis. Yep. All right. That's right. Yep. Uh, and we've got two more books to come. Yep. That'll be a total of 200 devotions. Mm -hmm. Do you realize one Testament, of you is going to have to produce 165 more? <laughs> we'll <Yeah>. see. <laughs> and then we, could, then we could have one for the whole year. There so, uh, okay, before we sort of um, come to the end here, and then we'll have a meet and greet down here, and people can come and meet each of you. In fact, you know, you never know who's sitting in the audience, so... Uh, Morgan is married. Any of you others have, you know, you never know who's. No, I'm spoken yeah. for. Oh, you're spoken for. <laughs> but these, these guys two are available. Are? Okay, yep. just so that you just never know uh, who is out there. So, um, because, uh, you know, it is actually, there is a lack of godly young men uh, in our nation today, sadly. And I just, I really pray that uh, just seeing what you young men have done, what you've been involved in, your maturity, as believers, uh, will be a witness to people here. Who knows? Maybe somebody here will be inspired to want to be a missionary. So, so are you, what do you think about missionaries overseas, missionaries here in America? I mean, 
what, what are you going to be involved in for the future? Well, what, yeah. what are, what are you start by all means, I'll tell you straight. Yeah, so, um, you know, basically Jesus Christ gave us all the command to go out and reach, you know, people around us, but also all the nations. And so that job is not completed yet. And so if we're a follower of Jesus Christ, you know, that's our, that's our goal and that's our mission. And so we should all be involved in overseas missions and reaching people who have no opportunity to hear the gospel. Because, I mean, here in the States, we can, you know, we can access the gospel. There's churches, there's awesome organizations like Answers in Genesis. But over there, I mean, there's places where they have no chance. They're going to live and they're going to die, and they're never going to hear about um, the saving gospel. And so we should all be involved in that. But um, there are so many jobs to do, and there's so many different ways to act in that. And being the people who are sent out to go over there, that's like one job. There's a whole support and base group that needs to be able to do that with um, prayer and funds and things like um, aviation organizations. And there's so many different jobs to do. So, um, yeah, all of us need to be involved, either sending or going. You pretty much summed it all up. He said it all. Yeah. That's it. But basically the way that our family has always seen it is the missionaries are kind of the tip of the iceberg, visible above the water, and underneath is this huge iceberg that's supporting us. Without the rest of the iceberg, you know, you don't, you don't have that tip of the tip of the iceberg or tip of the spear. So um, yeah, we're all sinners or goers. There's no really like bench boys, I guess you'd say, just watching. You know, we're all called to be a part. So and that's the beauty of the body of Christ. It's so diverse, and each person can play a unique role. And um, as followers of Christ, really, we're all created with a purpose. None of us are here just just to be here, but we're all um, ambassadors of Christ, and we all have a reason to be here. And kind of like our video series shows, the theme was that following Christ is the ultimate adventure. And that's what we saw living in the jungle, you know, a little bit different than everyone here probably. Growing up in the jungles, having fun adventures, seeing the gospel reach this un- unreached people group. But um, in the same way, there's so many jobs here as well, and that's one thing that I've really been encouraged by seeing Answers in Genesis and your ministry, um, you know, impacting all this, this young generation, teaching them up on the firm foundation of God's word. Um, you know, the, the body of Christ is so diverse, and there's different jobs everywhere we go. And so um, it's good just to be discerning as to what the Lord is leading you to, and to be open, and to follow him wherever he leads. Sometimes it's starting humbly, as you did. I love seeing in the ark those pictures of you and your family in your front yard, and then the progression all the way to cutting the ribbon for the Creation Museum, and then the ark encounter. The Lord used you, and um, out of that, all of a sudden, came the Creation Museum and the Ark. Not all of us are going to build an Ark, but um, the Lord can use all of us for amazing, equally amazing things. You know, um, just outside of Legacy Hall here, there's an exhibit called the Ham Family Legacy Exhibit. It has a picture of my mum and dad, and uh, my dad's Bible there. Little Noah's Ark he built me many years ago, my dad's Mm -hmm. Bible there. And it's really a, a challenge to people as to what legacy they are leaving, and I also want people to know that really the Creation Museum, the Ark Encounter, the Ministry of Answers in Genesis is a legacy of parents who devoted their lives to raising their children to stand on the authority of the Word of God, to defend the Christian faith and to have a heart for the gospel. Mm. And as I look at what you, uh, Wild Brothers, have done, uh, that's a legacy of what your parents taught you. Absolutely. And sure. what they have done for you. And Mike and and Libby are sitting right here at the front. And uh, praise the Lord for the impact you've had on these young men. And when you look at the, the videos, and the reach, the reach that those videos have already had, and who knows what for the future. It, it's interesting, when you go to the ark, on the, on the uh, second deck, we do have an exhibit called Who Was Noah? Mm. And we say in there, you know, if you, if you think about it, when you read scripture, when God told Noah to, to build the ark, he didn't say, what's an ark? How do I build a ship? I don't know how to do that. And he just did whatever God told him to do. And so in this particular exhibit, we, we suggest to people that God had already prepared Noah for the ministry he was going to have in building the ark, being a preacher of righteousness and being a witness to the world. And that's true of each one of us. Uh, The way we're brought up, the the parents that we have, the way they train us, the experiences, the life's experiences, then God uses all that for the ministries he's called us to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I can see that in you guys, and God has prepared you. You, You've had very unique upbringing. I mean, how many other people get to grow up in a remote jungle and do all sorts of interesting things and produce 
videos and then make an adventure documentary and yeah. find evidence of an unknown people group and do all this without TV and the internet <laughs> and look at the impact you already have. Who knows what the Lord's going to do for the future? And my challenge to every one of us is this. I know in my life there came a time, uh, it, was, it was when I was 10 years old actually, and my parents had brought a missionary in uh, to witness to, to children in the area and I was in that program and the missionary had a challenge for those who prepared to go wherever God wanted them to go and do whatever God wanted them to do. And I remember signing the piece of paper because he had to sign a piece of paper. Yes, I make that commitment. Mm. It's interesting when I um, met my wife, uh, well, she was to be my wife you know, many, many, many uh, years later. I'm, I mean, I met her at church actually, which is a good place to, 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 mm -hmm. to meet someone. And, I walked up the stairs and she looked at me and I looked at her and she said, I'm going to get that guy. And <laughs> she has a different story, but that's my story uh, to it all. Um, but, but anyway, I found out many years later that uh, around about the same time she was in Sunday school and heard the gospel and she said, Lord, if you did that for me, died on the cross, raised in the dead, I want to go wherever you want me to go and do whatever you want me to do. It's interesting how the Lord brought us both together. Mm -hmm and uh, look at the ministry that he has enabled us to be a part of. And so my challenge to every one of us is, have you been prepared to say to the Lord, and you don't 90% mean it, or 95%, or 99%, but you get to that point of 100% meaning it, that you say, I am prepared to do whatever you want me to do, and to go wherever you want me to go. And if you do that and mean it 100%, you never know what doors the Lord will open up and show you and use your life's experiences for a ministry to impact uh, lots and lots of people. You know, my parents uh, don't have any statues like Martin Luther has statues in different parts of the world and uh, John Bunyan from Pilgrim's Progress. If you go over to, to Bedford in England and places, you'll see statues of uh, John Bunyan and my, my parents saw uh, us get involved in, in uh, missions and in Christian work, but this really is a legacy of uh, parents who taught their children to stand on God's word and taught us the gospel. And we see the legacy of your parents and you guys. So let's pray for you and pray for your future mm, and pray for you. your yeah. mum and dad and Asher, right? Yes, sir. I, I, gotta, I try to remember all your names. Yeah. And uh, as you go back to the mission field, uh, to this uh, remote area yep. in Asia Pacific, living on a boat, yep. and as you two study here in the States and look to what the Lord will do uh, in the future. And then we'll have a meet and greet down the front. Okay. And you actually have some magnets if people want to be able to be praying for you and some keychains if they want to be able to pray for you. And there's also... Um, a website you can go to uh, to keep up to date uh, with all your travels. I imagine you're all going to keep in contact and keep up to date here on this website and we do, do a lot more yeah, video absolutely. vlogs and everything. And maybe you can do another video about a lost people group uh, in America, you know, Generation Z. Mm, uh, great idea. <laughs> yeah. Because they're, they're a lost people group in many ways. Mm, uh, so anyway, let's pray. A gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we just come before you this day and Lord, we, we just acknowledge that you are the creator God. I, I don't think any of us really, really get it, Lord, that you, that you know all things. I don't think we even can comprehend that. But you are the infinite creator God, infinite wisdom, infinite power, infinite knowledge. Lord, it's outside of our understanding. And yet, Lord, you created us and even though we rebelled against you and Adam, you love us so much that you provided a way for us to go back to be with you. The salvation through your son and what he did on, on the cross. And we just give you all the praise and thanks and glory and honor. And Lord, I, I pray for these young men, the Wild Brothers, and just thankful for what you've done in their lives. Thankful for their parents and the way they've trained them and been willing uh, to sacrifice so much in being in a remote area because of their heart for seeing people one to you because every human being is a being that's going to live forever and ever and ever, either with you or without you. And Lord, you told us to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel and 
we, we need to do that. There's nothing more important than that people know the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing in the entire universe. This, this life is but, uh, well, it's like the grass that's here today and gone tomorrow, as your word says. And so compared to eternity, this life is so short. It's, it's almost nothing compared to eternity. And we pray that you would help all of us to focus on those eternal things that matter. Ask your blessing on Mike and Libby and Asher too as they go uh, back uh, to a, a remote area that you would uh, open doors for them. I know they'll have struggles, Lord, we do in this world. We have struggles and issues that we have to deal with. Remember that the Israelites, when they conquered the promised land, had to do battle in various ways and had all sorts of problems, and yet, Lord, you guided them. And we pray that you'd be with them, watch over them, watch over uh, Hudson and Ken as they uh, study here in the States and that you would show them what uh, you want them to do for the future and make their path clear. And uh, Lord, we just c commit them to you now and ask for your rich blessing upon them. And Lord, that anyone in, in this audience here or watching this program uh, that will be thinking about these things and uh, Lord, that every one of us would be prepared to say, I want to go where you want me to go, do what you want me to do, and we would be really prepared to do that, and that you would call people to take the message of your word in the gospel to nations around the world, whether it be this nation, a remote jungle somewhere, or wherever it is, uh, that we'd be prepared to do that and uh, to step out and put our faith and trust in your leading in every area, your, your word promises that you'll be with us and guide us moment by moment. We thank you for this time we've had together now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.